What's up guys, Blademaster here. Welcome to the second game in the Use It and Lose It tournament. We fought between uh, Dewe and Cluella Nafogartha. The first match uh, showcased Dewe's masterful use of Avar's shoot and scoot strategy versus the rather slow, uh, heavily armored uh, Charlemagne faction brought by uh, Cluella Nafogartha. He managed to turn the uh, odds of having much fewer cavalry, surprisingly, with the Avars into his favor by playing at the same time defensively and aggressively, aggressively with his horse arches and defensively by keeping sort of a defensive formation with a lot of spearmen to counter the uh, lots of uh, horsemen that uh, Cluellen brought. The second match is again going to be fought in Seville it looks like, but this time two very different factions, Westphalia brought by Dewe versus Mercia brought by Cluellen of Agartha. The rule set in this tournament favors Westphalia quite a bit, I think, because Westphalia has a lot of really cheap but very effective uh, cavalry units, and there's no cavalry limit in the tournament. But on the other hand, uh, Mercia uh, has you know expensive units. Their their uh, crown jewels are the thanes, and the thanes are very expensive, uh, if I recall correctly, especially the royal thanes. Um, but yeah, we can just put this in slow motion for a little bit as we go through the um, go through the respective armies. Let's start with Devis. Devis has brought, uh, you know, understandably a huge cavalry component, a lot of Sa scout cavalry mixed in with Saxon cavalry. It looks like two scout cavalry with the Saxon cavalry on either flank, and two more scout cavalry um, in the center. There is a rule. Uh, sorry, the the funds are set to nine thousand, which is a whole. 1,000 less than your usual funds uh, funds level. So yes, it does um, you know favor Westphalia quite a bit because both Saxon and Scout Cavalry are A, very good, uh, and B, very cheap. The main line for Dewey is composed of Sayax Band, uh, three Sayax Band in front of a Hearth Guard General, uh, and two Javelin Men to form the Skirmish Contingent. We see a total of four Spear Veterans, uh, two on the flank, uh, backed up by a Noble Javelin Men, which is a very strange but interesting combination. Uh, the Spear Veterans, I, I'm not, I'm trying to un think why he would want to bring spear veterans especially when he's got so many cavalry units maybe he was expecting uh, the uh, mercians to bring their very very strong very capable uh, cavalry i believe it costs something like a thousand talents and it's very um, strong if I recall correctly, maybe I'm, I'm thinking wrong. But in any case, noble, noble Javelin Men will help even the odds if uh, the Thanes do attack the Spear Veterans because then they can throw their Javelins. And then the Noble Javelin Men also have a very good charge bonus of 30. So that could help even the odds quite a bit when, when they rip, uh, deplete their ammunition but then have a fearsome charge. That's it for uh, Dewey's army. Let's take a look at uh, Cluellen on the other hand. We see feared spearmen, the cheap spearmen of Mercia. Uh, on the uh, far sides, we see some Thane spearmen close to his main line. Uh, again, some select spearmen, uh, sorry, is it, yeah, select spearmen or was it Thane spearmen? Yeah, select spearmen and a Thane spearmen here. Uh, we see some more select spearmen, a couple more feared spearmen on the far side. Uh, his cavalry contingent is made up of just four plain old horsemen. Nothing special there. We see a feared axeman and a select axeman to form his axe component. And then his very fearsome uh, sword line is going to be composed of uh, one, two, royal, three royal thanes and one regular thanes. And of course, the royal companion sword general. So that is, this is such a fearsome infantry component that uh, Dewey would definitely not want to take on, uh, take head on. The thanes, especially once they have shield wall popped in, should be able to get quite a bit of uh, missile block chance there, 65%. So understandably, he's kept only the cheap javelin men to just fire in, get a couple of shots, get a couple of volleys in, uh, do some hit point damage onto the Thanes before um, you know taking that engagement. I don't think he'd want to even take that engagement. Probably just keep pu pushing back. I don't really know how he's going to want to win this game. Eventually, he's going to have to send him send in his scout cavalry and Saxon cavalry to engage head on. Uh, but then he needs to be very fearful of the horsemen because. In a support role, those horsemen can kill off all of the Westphalian cavalry. Right now, he's uh, focusing fire on one Thanes, which is a uh, popped shield wall, nothing else going on in the center. Uh, 65 missile block chance, but when you're taking this much concentrated fire, you're going to be losing a lot of men. And he needs to kill off the, the infantry uh, as soon as possible. The select axemen and feared axemen could potentially be very good um, targets for the Jalen men, but even better are the horsemen and beautiful volleys there from the noble Jalen men. They're about to get attacked by the select spearmen though, and they are, yeah, they're going to get engaged. That's a bit of mismicro on Dewey's part. 
uh, and now the spear veterans are going to get charged in by the feared uh, feared axemen. Uh, nothing else going on there, but the the um, select sorry the spear veterans against the feared axemen. The feared axemen would probably win this, but it would be a very cost-effective trade for uh, Cluelan because they would punch way above their weight class with that high armor penetrating damage that the one-handed axes carry, of course. The Scout Cavalry and Saxon Cavalry have not been able to make their presence felt at all so far. Uh, they should be utilizing their ja javelins only on enemy cavalry against uh, regular ca uh, regular infantry. It's pretty much wasted. Uh, he's going to pull away his Saxon Cavalry. Again, we can see shades of the charge feints that he uh, did so successfully in game one. But right now, a very good, very important unit uh, in the Noble Javelinman is dying for Deve without having contributed much at all to this game. Uh, select Spearmen and uh, Select Axemen uh, ganging up and destroying um, one of the Spear Veterans. The Javelinman about to get charged at by the Thane Spearmen, but now the Seax Band, which would ordinarily be very poor against the Mercian main line, would actually do very well against the Thane Spearmen, I think. They don't have very good armor penetrating damage, but with their uh, shield wall, they have a total of 15 bonus versus infantry, which would definitely make its presence felt, especially when they're fighting up against just a spear unit. The Javelin men already destroyed one of the Thanes. Now they're making their mark uh, on the Royal Thanes. Uh, the Scout and Saxon Cavalry pulling away, although it does look quite a bit more difficult for uh, Westphalia at this point. The uh, Feared Spearmen are engaged against the Scout Cavalry. Oh no, one of the Scout Cavalry already dead, I think, uh, because the Scout Cavalry will not be able to last very long against any sort of spears. They're quite the... Look at the armor on these guys. It's uh, very easy to get, them, get it wrong with them. Scout Cavalry here with uh, no uh, kills, even though it's depleted all of its ammunition, but it can make a very, very, pot a very strong potential rear charge onto that uh, Select Spearmen and Select Axemen and then completely destroy them. Here, uh, the Seax band are doing well against the Thane Spearmen, although it's going to take a long time for them to make their presence felt. And now, a coordinated charge, one, between, one by the horsemen and one by the scout cavalry. But the Spear Veterans will be able to hold out a bit longer than the Select Axemen and the Spearmen. We can see the Axemen already routed off the field. The Jalen men now forced into combat against the Royal Thanes and it is all sorts of pandemonium and that's not looking good for the Westphalians. The Hearth Guard is now chasing away the Feared Spearmen. The Scout Cavalry or the Saxon Cavalry going to charge into the Feared Spearmen and kill them off. Freeing up the General. Uh, who would be very well utilized against the Royal Thanes. Now the Scout Cavalry pulling away one of the horsemen, not good uh, micro from uh, Cluellen, but uh, the Scout Cavalry is gone, but another uh, Scout Cavalry uh, over here from Westphalia has been uh, routed off the field, I believe. Uh, the Jalun men now attacked by the horsemen, the, uh, the Spear Veterans hurrying to try and get uh, and pin these uh, horsemen in place and kill them off. But even then, I don't see how he's really going to be able to win this. He's got a lot of cavalry, uh, Deve does, but the Royal Thanes are a very, very strong um, infantry unit and very tanky, more importantly. The Seax man got 113 kills with that incredible shield wall, um, but now against the horsemen, they will lose very, very quickly. This uh, engagement now, for some, somehow, the Spear Veterans and the Seax man are still holding strong. So, consecutive rear charges from that scout cavalry could potentially be very devastating. Uh, for the rest of the engagements, it looks like the spear veterans are holding out for a long time and I think that's exactly why, um, why Deve brought them. They won't do well against enemy uh, infantry, but he wasn't going to expect them to do well against enemy infantry, uh, but they can hold out very, very long. So now the scout cavalry getting another charge in. It looks like they were aiming for the enemy cavalry, so now their charge wasn't the strongest. No shield wall, oh, shield wall being popped on the hearth card. Now they're going to uh, come into contact against royal companions and feared axemen, neither of whom are in shield wall, so the hearth card could potentially do incredibly well in this engagement. The uh, scout cavalry, again, not been able to do too much, especially against the royal thanes. The royal thanes are going to be a royal pain in the ass uh, for the Westphalians as the game wears on. A lot of the feared spearmen still uh, alive, full strength royal, uh, feared spearmen, full strength feared axemen. It is not looking good for Westphalia at all in this game, even though the rule set, the, uh, the lower fund level for this tournament does favor the Westphalians, there's nothing that can, um, I mean, you can't really discount the West, uh, the Mercians brute force. That is uh, why they're one of the most, I think probably the most powerful uh, in, uh, faction in the game in my opinion. Even though, you know, Age of Charlemagne is incredibly well balanced and, uh, you know, any faction can beat any faction. Uh, it's very, very close. Uh, the Feared Axemen now uh, popped into an emergency shield wall against the Scout Cavalry, which means the Scout Cavalry 
doesn't get as many kills as it potentially could have. 155 kills with this Scout Cavalry. They cost like 400 talents or something ridiculous like that. They have really made their presence felt. At least one of them. The other Saxon Cavalry over here just can't do too much. If you bring too much Cavalry and you don't have enough um, uh, infantry units to help protect them, it's going to be suicide for you in Age of Charlemagne because you always need a very balanced army in Charlemagne. Uh, you can't just send in cavalry by themselves. They always need support when they get engaged. And um, yeah, that means that Deve is not going to be able to take game two. It was uh, a brave uh, army put up by Deve, but it was also a brave army put up by uh, Cluel in the, in, the, in the first game. And it looks like the you know uh, more number of cavalry you bring, the more you sacrifice uh, you know your supporting troops and uh, the easier it is for you to lose. Valiant defeat for Deve in game two. So that means it's 1-1 between Deve and Cluelin of Agartha. You can see that, look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cavalry. Uh, and let's look at the potential units that could support them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven total units. I'm not counting the Javelin men because Javelin men don't do good in melee, even the noble Javelin men. Granted, he didn't use the noble Javelin men well. And I don't count the hearth card because you don't want to uh, put your general into the midst of action uh, straight away. And in any case, the hearth guard is a very slow unit, so it won't be good at reinforcing. So what you have here is a situation where you have far too many cavalry and far too few uh, proper reinforcing units. On the other hand, Mercia Cluellen brought something that is much more traditional, uh, so a Royal Thane mainline, which you can see did major work. Uh, with some axemen, some spearmen. Look at the number of potential supporting troops he had. He had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, reinforcing units, eight, nine, ten, eleven reinforcing units for just four total horsemen. So you can see at the end of the day, the horsemen did get a lot of kills, even though they're not the best uh, cavalry units that Mercia could deploy or the best cavalry units that in the game at all. So very fun uh, game too. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed these uh, Age of Charlemagne battles. It's a good refresher from the Warhammer multiplayer that's been going on in the channel. Uh, let me know if you want to see more and stay tuned for more. Peace.